Over the years, the popularity of FPS games have skyrocketed, and so did the demand for ways to get better, or as some may call it, get good. To achieve progression in this pursuit, the player must be proficient in multiple areas of the game, such as raw aim, movement, decision making, and positioning, and some factors being outside of the game which can impact a player just as much as in-game skill can. These IRL factors can be split into two categories, one being the physical and the other being the mental. Today we'll be discussing the mental side of our gameplay and how we can understand the limits of our mental endurance, how to work within the limits of our mental endurance, and most importantly how to push past those boundaries and increase endurance thus increasing the amount of time you play at your best before falling victim to fatigue. But before we get into that I have a small request, if this content helped you out in some way, shape, or form, please support the channel by liking or subscribing. This is a small click for you, but for me, it means a lot. Thanks again, and let's get on with the video. When talking about mental endurance, I am referring to how fast we register what we see, as well as how our mood can impact performance. If not understood, the detrimental effect of mental fatigue can go largely unnoticed while gaming for long periods of time. Factors such as having a lack of sleep, playing on an empty stomach, or having a bad day prior to gaming play huge roles in determining how much mental endurance you have on that current day. Which brings me to the definition mentioned at the beginning of this video. Visual acuity is the measure of the ability of the eye to distinguish shapes and details of objects at a given distance. In relation to FPS games, it is how fast our eyes can distinguish a player from the environment. In other words, target acquisition. Now visual acuity can vary daily depending on multiple variables and will slowly start to decline while gaming for long periods of time. Visual acuity can also be handicapped by either a lack of sleep or nutrition. This is known as acuity fatigue. The question is, how can we identify the problem as acuity fatigue as well as maximize the time when our acuity is at its best? Another type of mental endurance to recognize is emotional fatigue, which can also affect target acquisition from being distracted by negative outside influences rather than being focused on the variables presented in game. Not only does it affect attentiveness, but it can also cause anxiousness in fight or flight situations, as well as irritability and wanting fast success which leads to making hasty decisions rather than being patient and making calculated ones. Emotional fatigue can be very detrimental for some. If the negative outside influences are not handled or reconciled before gameplay, performance will decrease drastically with every bad decision or uncontrolled circumstance that has occurred, resulting in a snowball effect that will decrease mental endurance at an expedited rate. Unlike emotional fatigue, visual acuity limits are easily overlooked because in most cases it is not a dramatic change but rather a slow decrease in performance. So before moving forward we need to find out what to look for and how to measure it. The first way we can identify fatigue is through visual acuity. This occurs when your eyes take an abnormal amount of time to find an object in an environment and for the brain to perceive it as a target. In most cases we're looking at 0.5 to 0.75 seconds rather than instant conscious acknowledgement. Although this method seems easy, it is actually quite hard to track because again, these symptoms happen gradually rather than drastically. An easier way to identify acuity fatigue is by simply looking up at a ceiling fan on a moderate speed and tracking a single blade. If you are having trouble tracking that blade, then you have successfully found the point at which acuity fatigue has set in. Now that we have a way to identify the symptoms, we need to be able to track it in order to work within our limits. By taking note of when we start our session to the point at which performance starts to noticeably decrease. I recorded 60 gaming sessions to obtain a decent sample size in order to find an average number representing the amount of time I performed my best in each session. As for you guys, I recommend 10 to 15 sessions to obtain a rough estimate of your peak performance average. For me, it is a little under 3 hours until I started to see a decline in my performance, acuity, and mood. If there are any low outliers to that average number, Try to recollect and see if there were any variables during that time which could have affected your gameplay. From a personal experience, my outliers were attributed to emotional fatigue such as having a bad day at work, lack of sleep the night before, or playing on an empty stomach, all of which handicapped my performance at the start of my session which prevented me from reaching peak performance. Now that we have an average number, we can utilize it and work within our limits to not only optimize getting better at the game of our choice, but also we can train to push those mental boundaries that are currently set. There are two huge benefits to knowing your mental endurance limits. 
The first is being able to utilize that window in time to play at peak levels, whether it be in competitive environments or to train in-game skills. The second is understanding when to take a break so you can start refreshed and at full capacity. With that being said, how does the player maximize their time before the endurance limit is reached? Yes, you can play competitive ranked modes during this time. However, it can also be used to make tremendous leaps in skill by playing and training with purpose while at full mental capacity. During this time, your brain is performing tasks as efficiently as possible, thus allowing all the information gained during this period to be processed and incorporated into future gameplay. To give a few examples, say you want to get better at tracking in Apex Legends. Rather than trying to flick shot while tap strafing like your favorite streamer, the player instead makes a conscious effort to focus on smoothly tracking the target as precisely as possible. Or say you want to get better at positioning. Rather than just holding the W key, the player can consciously focus on if the position is on the high ground, if it has cover, and which possible angles can the enemy shoot them from, allowing the brain to single out a particular skill and have an easier time improving on it. This is what is called training with intent. It is one of the fastest ways to improve a player's skill level, whether it be for aim or in-game mechanics, especially for those of us that are restricted in the times that we are able to play. Now for when we reach our limits and we're feeling these symptoms of fatigue, I'm not saying to stop playing the game for the rest of the day. I'm telling you guys to take a break, 20 to 30 minutes, and just simply step away. Grab something to eat, talk to a friend, take a nap, touch some grass, whatever your fancy is, give your brain as well as your eyes a rest. Also during this time, try your best not to stare at a screen or anything that requires you to focus on a particular object to prevent further strain and ocular exhaustion thus promoting an increase in mood as well as helping the synapses in your brain to recuperate from the input and output of information. So we finally arrive at the question, how exactly do we increase our mental endurance limit? Well, the first step is being aware of what your limit is. The second step is slowly trying to go beyond that limit with each and every session and tracking the progress. The human brain is absolutely amazing at adapting to experiences just as long as it is aware of the goal that it is trying to achieve. This is due to neuroplasticity, which is the brain's ability to rewire itself. Essentially, the reason why we are able to develop mentally from infants to adults. Now there are ways to temporarily increase these endurance limits with stimulants such as caffeine by allowing the player to feel more alert and less tired, however it does very little to affect the decline of visual acuity. What I recommend is to take the stimulant at the start of a break, thus allowing it to kick in at the end of the break. This will give you higher levels of alertness as well as allowing your eyes and brain time to recuperate. Be aware though that stimulants at some point have diminishing returns and will never replace a good night's sleep. Before wrapping this up, I want to let you guys know that all the information I am presenting in this video has not only been applied in-game over the course of 4 months, but also tested in high difficulty competitive environments that are extremely unforgiving towards minor mistakes, which is solo queuing to Diamond in the meat grinder known as Ranked for this season in Apex Legends. To help my Destiny 2 viewers better understand this difficulty, I would equate it to obtaining Redrick's Claymore in Destiny 2's competitive PvP. Now I want to be completely honest with you guys and let you know, Yes, there are times when I raged. Yes, there were times when I made the dumbest decisions in terms of positioning. And yes, there were times where I lost a 1v1 when I clearly had the advantage. And trust me, this list goes on. But as long as I stayed consistent and knew when to walk away and take a break, for the most part, I completed this goal with ease. I'm saying this as a fellow casual player that is a little better than average and is continuing to learn new things every day. So if I can do it, I sure as hell know you can do it too. With that being said, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. If this video helped you in some way, shape, or form, please leave a like or subscribe. Again, it is a small click for you, but for me, it means the world. See you guys soon. Keep moving forward. Peace.